Hi everyone, it's Carrie. Today we're going to be talking about pots. I'll show you my latest from my pot haul. So today we're having flooding weather. All the schools in the area are closed for counties around. Uh, they let out early yesterday. We've had continuous rain for the last two days. It's supposed to stop by tonight, but we've had uh, flooding alerts all day. So it's just been one of those days you don't get out and go anywhere. It's a good Netflix day. So today we're talking about pots and I'm gonna show you the latest pots that I've purchased. I've actually purchased quite a few. So let's get into our pots. So if you're a gardener or you grow succulents, you're always collecting pots. I look for them everywhere. I look around my house for things that maybe I haven't used in a while, and I think, oh, I could turn that into a pot. I'll drill a hole. Like Carmen, <laughs> yes, we want to change everything into a pot. I've got a drill bit, I will make a hole in it, and I will make it into a pot. So these are three that I mentioned in another video that I had purchased at an antique store. These are, you know, like bonsai pots, or you could put fake flowers in them. You know, that's just what us ladies do, or anybody does with them. But I like these short, wide pots. I like them to be short because most of the succulents I grow, they have a smaller root system. Yes, they'll eventually fill the pot, but only like the uh, lithops, they have a long uh, tap root. You might need something a little deeper than this, but you wouldn't have to. This would still work for it. But these are the pots that I like to plant my succulents in. And I also like cement pots. But let's, let's stick with this for a minute. So this is glazed. Why is glazed good? Well, one thing, water is not gonna seep through onto your furniture. If you have, say, wooden furniture, and you set this on there, water's not gonna seep out of it and ruin your furniture just by evaporation. So this I would drill maybe a couple of holes in it. I don't think I would need any more than that. And um, get a good, good draining soil mix and these should be fine. Why would I not use the glaze? They just don't breathe as well. You just deal with that. You know your climate. You know how your plants tolerate where you live and what their needs have been. So you know whether you can use a glazed or unglazed. I think these will do fine. Some more that I've purchased. I found this at Burke's Outlet. You know I like to, to hunt at Burke's Outlet for pots. This is more decoration. I might not actually plant into this pot. I might slip the whole pot down into this. But I thought it would look pretty with some um, Senecio raleanus, you know, the a burrow tail or something hanging out of it, or a um, string of pearls, and then larger plants, something tall maybe in the back. But I like this gray color. You know, a lot of the, the succulents have this grayish appearance, uh, appearance, like opalina with the blush, or, you know, this, is, this would just be very contrasty with beautiful succulents coming out of it. And I think it's the right size. And I think I, get, I gave $6 for it from the tag on here. I may have got a discount on it, I don't know, but I thought this would be really neat as a planner. Then I purchased these. We have this um, store in Tullahoma. It's called Ollie's all these discounted goods or something like that. It's, it's like an old, um, it's not a Walmart, but maybe it was a Kmart at one time, that type of building. And they have gone in there and I guess it's overstocks is what it is. So they were running a special a couple of weeks ago on all of their pots and they had gotten in like a truckload. So I know these are taller. Um, I plan on these going outside uh, onto my back porch and my lanai, as I like to call it. But uh, I'm gonna be using these. These have already been pre-drilled. They're 
like a terracotta pot. Um, they do have a lining inside and I guess it's just painted. But they do kind of look like terracotta. But I thought these were great. It says they're made in Thailand. And I thought the colors is what really attracted me on this. They're just a good medium sized pot and a small pot. There's a lot of things I can do in these pots. They should breathe well, shouldn't be any problems with that. And this one, I will have to uh, drill a hole in it. But I'm excited about these. I just love the colors and I got these at a great deal. Most of these, this one was probably $3. This one was probably $6. So very good prices on these. And this little pot, I have been saving. So I'm going to be putting some of my new um, seedlings from propagation in this little pot. I want it to just fill and overflow with babies. I think this is just as cute as it can be. This was a candle holder and I've drilled a hole in the bottom of it. it says it come from big lots, but I think I gave $2 for this little pot. But I love the color. Just think of, you know, some of the succulents that you can put in here that would just really contrast with the colors. And it's small and it's low. It's about maybe three inches, two and a half to three inches deep. And I thought this was just gorgeous. And plus it's got roses on it. So I'm gonna plant something that's gonna be in a rosette. So great little pot. I also got some bigger ones. It's not that these are that pretty. But, you see it's birds. I like the color. The decor is just not that great, but it's a good size pot and it is lower. I can plant a lot of specimens in this. And this pot was only $4. Now how can you pass up a pot for $4 at this size? You can see the colors on the inside. It already has a pre-drilled hole. And then I got the bigger one, and these are, are very heavy pots. I don't know, I guess this one is about a 12 inch pot and it's maybe five, four to five inches deep. Great pot. So I have two matching pots. The price tag on this one was $4.99. So how can I beat that? I got one for $4 and I got one for $5. Matching set. Anytime you can get a good pot, and most pots are good, you just have to know what you're growing, the water requirements, you know, it, does it have a hole in it for good drainage? That's all it takes. So all of these are great pots and I'm just very excited about them. So how do you choose a pot? How do you know what will really work? Well, aesthetics is really a big thing. Um, is it a pot that's pleasing to the eye? Is it gonna kinda go with the colors of the plants that you're putting in it? Succulents just have many beautiful colors and it's, it's really a good thing because it's very pleasing to the eye to match up the colors with the pot or something that contrasts with it. You know, does your pot have good drainage holes? Is it porous? You know, will the plants will be able to breathe, or you know, is it? Do you have enough drainage holes in it, and will it get enough um, airflow around it to give you uh, to allow the plant to breathe well? These are all personal choices based on your needs and the needs of your plants. You have seen uh, my large planting that I did in a pot like this. It's just a larger version, and you can see this sits at an angle, it's got quite a bit of tilt, so I can just see flowers spilling out over this, and of course succulents, that's what I'm gonna put in this. I love the color. I think the other one I planted aeoniums in, and it was a big hit. It was a big hit with me, it's a big hit with the people that watch my channel and subscribe, and I also put it on Facebook and just got a lot of comments and likes on it. So I really love this. It's kinda of like a cracked egg, although the shape is not like an egg, but I just love this. It also reminds me of a baby dinosaur or something like that. But anyway, this was one of my little finds. I gave $5 for it. And then this was another thing. These, these were purchased at Burke's Outlet. So how do you like my frog? Isn't it cute? It's also like a fake 
cement. It's light, it's not heavy at all. I gave $6 for this. So it's like a frog sitting in a shell. And I'm going to put this out somewhere on my back porch in my garden. Um, I wish it had something I could plant in it. I wish it had a hole, but it doesn't. But I just thought it was really cute. Good yard art. And then this, my husband and my daughter both looked at it like, what'd you buy that for? Okay, so this sits like this. It sits on the shelf so that he looks like he's got his leg hanging off and he's just propped up there sitting on the shelf. I think it's really cute. Frogs are really in right now. So all of these colors and things go together and they will look great on a shelf. Um, they would look great when you put your uh, succulents in a gutter. You know, you make a planter out of a gutter. That's one of the things I want to do this year. So all of these, all the colors would just go together and look really nice. But these are just some of my finds that I've come up with. And uh, I wanted to show them to you and just talk about, um, talk about the things we need to do when we have our plants. What is the downside to a porous pot? The water evaporates a lot faster, I meaning you have to water more frequently when you have a porous pot. That's not really a downside, that can be an upside as well. But the upside for your plants is they have more circulating air and the excess water is evaporated more quick, quickly, preventing root rot. Um, when do you need to transplant? When do you need to go to a, a larger size pot? Well, I, get a, I purchase a lot of my plants in the little two and a half inch pots, say from Walmart or Lowe's. Um, or I'm propagating in a two inch cell, you know, very small. So if I've purchased a plant in one of these little two and a half inch pots, you can see it's been growing or they have forced it to grow a lot faster in these little pots. And this one's got pups, got a little tiny one coming out here. And you know, it's got three large specimens in it right now. So this is one that I'm gonna want to repot, but what am I gonna repot it into? How big do I wanna go? If I'm just gonna keep this as a specimen plant, I'm not putting in an arrangement, I only want to go maybe two inches larger. So I might choose a four inch pot, probably not over a five inch to put this in. And then I would uh, add some top dressing to it, but that's as big as I would go. So say this. That would be really pretty in there. The colors, gorgeous. Kind of match it, it's in a rosette, which matches the roses on here. So this is something that would be good to repot this into. I don't want to go too much bigger. You want your roots to fill the pot. Most of these plants actually, actually like to be root bound. And now I have this little pot. This is where I've been propagating and I have three plants growing in here. One still has its leaf attached and the other two, they have dried up. But here, this is okay. Their roots have not filled this little cup and they're, they're gonna continue to grow and they're gonna have plenty of room. So it's gonna be a while before I need to take it out of this small pot. But that's when I look at what kind of pot do I wanna put them in? What do I need to upgrade to? You know, I can upgrade to a three inch pot on these later and they would still be fine. But I want to keep the pot relative to the size of the plants that's gonna be putting in here. Now this one that I've been propagating in, I have a whole lot of plants in here, but it's gonna be a long time, say a year longer, before they ever fill this pot, before their root systems use up all the soil and nutrients that's in it. So I have a long way to go on this one, but that's why I chose the pot. It's low. It's a pretty shape. It's like an heirloom piece that I wanted to keep for my friend. And this is gonna be very pretty with all these colors in it, just like all the colors in the pot. So that's just what you need to think of when you're choosing your pot and when do you need to transplant into a larger pot. But, but anyway, thank you for watching Garden Rudiments. I hope you'll come back and visit and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on Garden Rudiments.